Hello Lizzie here and today I'm going to show you how to make Norma and this is this lovely lovely boho bag it really is a boho bag it's slouchy it's sloppy it's slinging over your shoulder it's takeaway for the weekend it's a picnic in the park it's whatever you want it to be um, it's got some great folding techniques on the side there I did a pouch similar to this last year but this is the big bag version got a couple of uh, magnetic closures there in the flap and this lovely big wide opening to take all your or your shopping or your paraphernalia maybe it's going to be your baby bag maybe that's the sort of thing you need um, wh whatever the case um, Norma is going to fit the bill she, I, she's so big I can hardly carry her off the desk nice long straps which of course you can make adjustable if you want to um, but she's just a great mate now I've made her in shibori fabric which is such a treat and I'm spoiling myself by doing that but you can make her in whatever you like and um, perfect for like a cotton canvas um, maybe even a faux leather um, she's, we've got some multiple layers going on when we start to make it um, but I think you will absolutely love this pattern I'm going to see lots of these being made because actually it's a really really simple make so let's get started I'll pop Norma behind me shall I so you can see her there and you can see our second project there at the back as well this little mini quilt top and we'll talk about that in another video another day so you're going to obviously get the pattern so you've got all the information there of what to cut uh, there's no pattern pieces so it's all rectangles squares that sort of thing so it's really easy to follow the first thing we're going to do is to put the magnetic closures in the flap all right so let's get that on the desk i'll pop that to one side so if we go on the overhead you'll be able to see that I've got my lining here so I've got a spotty lining a navy blue spotty lining and also this is my outer fabric which is a gorgeous really soft denim it's almost like a chambray um, it's going to be nice and easy to work with um, we've got um, a decaville light on there and a wadding as well so it's got a little bit of stiffness to it but it's got the softness of the wadding that's the outer so with the lining I've already put my squares of decaville light there to protect my um, to, to protect the snap fasteners to make them really nice and strong that's what we need so I'm going to bring in my silicone mat and I'm going to bring in my ruler and my pen, <laughs> my heat erasable pen. It can be any pen, to be perfectly honest. And from this corner here, we're going to put our ruler in place and we're going to measure in one and a quarter inches and do a little dot. Hopefully you can see that OK. And then from this side as well, you're going to measure that again. This is all in the pattern, so you don't need to remember. It's all in the pattern. There we go. So there is are two dots so from there we're going to put some the metal closures well we need to mark where they're going to be so let's just put our metal closure with the dot right in the center and I'm just going to do two lines either side and again with this one and this is just a guide for me so I know where I'm going to punch the holes to take my magnetic clasps and you'll need two so one either side and they stick together like crazy so <laughs> just be just be warned and they'll also stick to your sewing machine as well as you stitch so if you find your sewing machine clamping onto your uh, magnetic closures you know the reason why so with my screw punch tool I'm going to just make the holes one and two and then the same again and I've got a, a, a silicon mat that I've got there just to protect my table and I've been using this silicon mat for years and it, it is a little bit wall wounded but it does the job beautifully for me so you're going to put the thin side of your magnetic closure onto your lining so if we look at the magnet, magnetic closure like this you can see you've got a fat side and a thin side and it's the thin side that we're going to put on the flap so you're going to put that on the right side of your fabric and just pop it through like that and then while we're there we might as well do the other side and just pop that through the holes there there we go 
and then we're just putting our closure over the top again I'm still protecting my table because you just there's we're using metal here and the, with the back of my scissors I'm just going to bend those legs in place now look these are my best scissors so find your craft scissors your kitchen scissors or, or something else another tool that you can use to press that flat and then I'll just give it a little squidge and that's great same the other side put the washer over the top push one leg down push the other leg down let's get it and actually you could do this with your thumb if you wanted to if you're strong enough I, I tend to always use the back of some scissors and then if you want it really flat just push it down with the flat of your scissors there okay so that is the flap done with the magnetic closures. So I've still got these parts here. So those parts there for the front of the bag. So we'll come to those shortly. So let's deal with this piece here. So going by the pattern, which I've got in front of me, we're going to do right sides together. So let's get that done. And you're going to stitch around three sides. So if I lift that up, you're going to go down, across and up. We're going to turn through, well we're going to chop our corners off, turn through and press. And actually if you wanted to you could top stitch. Oops, lost a bobbin on the floor. And of course you're going to pin this if you want to, so let's, let's do that, let's be good. Let's pin it. Avoid the Decaville light because it's um, it's quite a stiff product to get your pins through. There's no point struggling. So just pop a pin through. There we go. And we're good to go. So now again, all we're going to do is going down the sides, across the bottom and up. Normal stitch length, two and a half is fine. Quarter inch seam, oh actually it's a half inch seam allowance this time. I'm glad I remembered that before I started. It's normally quarter inch, but on this bag it's a half an inch. Let's just turn the stitch length down. And we'll just whiz around this. There we go. Just take the pressure off my machine a little bit. There we go. And around the bottom like I say it's half an inch and then up the sides and if you want to use the walking foot it's a good time to use it we're using lots of layers here I tend to say it and never do it okay so there's our flap made we're just going to trim the corners off not too close to your stitching but just take some of the bulk away and again and then we're going to turn through so just get your thumb into the corners push through from that corner out so if we look on the overhead you'll be able to see what that looks like and I'll just get a little turning tool to help me poke those corners out and like I say if you want to please top stitch you know please go round you know it depends on your confidence how you feel about things how you how confident you are so there is our lining so there's our lining there and there's the front of the bag there the flap so what we're going to do now is we're going to just sort of do a paid basting stitch right across the top to join all those two layers together. So I'm just going to increase my stitch length and just make sure your raw edges stay together straight across. Lovely. And while we're there let's find the center of our flap okay so fold in half let's do it so you can see the stud side fold in half right sides together wrong sides together it matters not fold in half and then just cut yourself a little nick out of the front of that so it's right in the center there's a little nick 
right at the center there and that's an excellent way of getting the center of your fabric rather than getting the tape measure out so if we follow our pattern down which I've got as I say right in front of me uh, let's see there it is so we've done the first few steps we're on um, we're on step number six now <laughs> we've, we've done all of that really quickly so on the outer bag piece again this is obviously the denim we're looking at the short edges so if I hold that up that's the whole bag piece so we're looking at this short edge here okay and I'm going to find the middle so fold in half bring your sides together so you've got a half a piece there and just cut a little nick out we know that's halfway now I hope you want to have a little look at my wadding. It is a good half an inch smaller all the way around than my um, my outer piece. And that's because we're going to stitch multiple layers at, at um, another stage. And to take a lot of this wadding out is a very good idea. I'm using H640 this time instead of 2020. Uh, sorry, 8020. But it doesn't matter which you use. OK, um, I just wanted to try something different. So if we look at the overhead, we're going right sides together. So we're doing right sides of our um, flap here to the right sides of our fabric here. And I'm just going to pop a pin in there to hold those layers together. So let's get that done. So I'm using my extra long pins to go through all of those layers. And these are really sharp as well, which is lovely. So I've matched up my notches in the centre. There we go. And through. So what we're going to do now is we're going to baste the flap onto the short edge of the bag. So if I hold it like that, you'll be able to see that that is the centre there. We're going to baste, start about here, go all the way across and finish just about a half an inch from the edge of the flap there. And again, we're just basting. So go over your original basting stitches. That's fine. So again, just straight over. Make sure you catch that first little bit fine. So all the way across. OK. And off the end there so it's all encased into the fabric so if I hold it like that you'll be able to see what that looks like there we've just top stitched so the next part of this is to actually um, do the opposite end and we're going to put the um, we're going to put the other um, magnetic closures in the other end so Find the middle again so this is the the bit we've just stitched so it's the opposite end so it's the other short end so bring your edges together again find the center here we are now in the picture because I was just referring to my picture there so I could see um, remember how I showed it to you I've got one red thread and one um, magnetic closure in so you can see exactly where they go so once you've found the center of the other short side so if i was to lift that up you can see i've got um, a, a clip there that i've just made a little mark so we can see where the center is and from that center point you're measuring out three and three quarter inches either side which gives you seven and a half inches altogether. so let's just mark that and mark that so it's three and three quarter inches either side of your notch to give you seven and a half then you're coming down four and a half and then five there's a reason for that right so if we measure down four and a half and five so use your rulers so you get a nice straight line so four and a half and five okay so I've done my two marks there either side just about see that on the overhead one there one there one there one there and our magnetic closures are going right in the center so if I bring them in 
they sit like that and oh, we can't get it to stand up but if I put the the washer there <laughs> they are so magnetic <laughs> there we go so I've put the washers there so you can see where they're going to go so once again we're going to get our silicon mat put that underneath my bag and do the two holes now I'm going to do my marks but you probably won't be able to see them to be honest as long as I've got a rough idea where we're going then all is fine so a mark either side of my washers yeah I can see them okay so once again I get my screw punch tool and just put my holes in so one two move my mat across protect my table one and two good so this time our these are our fatter pieces and the legs go through from the front the legs go through on the front again like that and flip it over let's get our silicon mat out of the way and our pen there we are I can see them just coming through there Got lots of bits already gathered on there so put the washers on the back like so use the back of our scissors or whatever else you might have handy now because we've got um, the wadding on here this is the H640 you don't need to really put another stabilizer on here for the washers for the you know for this to take the pressure of the snap fasteners um, but you can you can if you wanted to but I would do that before you put the wadding on let's just get that <laughs> There we go, do it from this side. Yeah, that's good. So just give them a little squidge down. So there's our snaps or our magnetic closures put on the front of the bag. So we're all good for that. So the next stage is to actually put all of the layers together. So where's my lining? <laughs> Here we go. There's my lining. Here we go. So quite a big piece of fabric to keep maneuvering so we're doing right sides together there we go and we're going to stitch the two short sides so if I hold this up like I say it's quite big it does it's surprisingly um, it comes down to a medium sized bag but you'd think it's going to be enormous but that's all the folding we're going to do shortly it's a bit origami <laughs> so we've got two long edges and we've got two short edges the short edges have the pocket and they have these um, magnetic closures and those are the sides we're now going to stitch so right sides together and obviously pin this when I say obviously <laughs> um, so don't forget also it's a half an inch seam allowance on this bag so we're now going over the, the flap end. So we're going straight over. Make sure it meets the other end. Like I say, you might want to put clips along here or um, pins. So that's one done I've gone all the way across that end and that's the end with the the pocket I'm oh, sorry the flap so now we're going to do the other short end again half an inch seam allowance Get that walking foot on. It does help. It's amazing. <laughs> One day I'm going to do it. Okay, let's just get those edges meeting.
Okay. So that is both short ends stitched. So this end and this end, this, these long end ed edges, um, we're not stitching at the moment. So turn through. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Oh, this is looks. This is looking really lovely because it's the denim. Now, do press every stage. So now, go away and press this. Um, I'm just going to finger press it, just so we can get cracking. Okay. So on this side, just going to finger press again. When you um, go to do these seams, just roll them in your, your fingers and that will open up the seam and so both pieces of fabric will be where they should be. There we go. That's lovely. Okay. So, now what we're going to do is bring the shoulders up. So these these I'm now calling the shoulders. So let's do it so you can see well what I'm talking about. So this here and this here is the shoulder. So if you see the words shoulder in the pattern now, you'll know that I'm referring to these top halves here. We can forget about the flap because that's that's not a shoulder, but here and here are, okay? So we're doing right sides together. And this is where I will pin, just to make sure it all sits nicely. Don't worry about the flap, it's okay. You can see that it's kind of loose. And what you're doing is, let me just check. Um, so yeah, you're bringing those raw edges together and we're gonna stitch all the layers, both sides. So this is where I'm going to pin to make sure my fabric is sitting perfectly. Now, of course, you can still you can still top stitch these if you want to. Um, a lot of it will be lost in this part now, so um, I'll leave that for you to decide. Um, it's not something I included. To be honest, I wanted this to be as kind of clean looking. Okay, so I've pinned that side, there and there. And I'm just making sure that my fabric is sitting where I want it to be. Okay, and another long pin. So, from the edge of the flap here, so this, this corner here, and this corner here, mark out one and a half inches. So if we if we have a look on the overhead, just getting my uh, ruler in here so we can see. So that's one, one and a half. I'm just going to draw a marker there. I mean, I can see that, but I'm trying to make it so it's easier for you to see. There's that one and a half mark there. To the other side, I want you to do exactly the same. So it's one and a half. I can see that, hopefully you can as well. And what we're going to do now is that we're going to stitch all of these layers together, the shoulders, so both pieces. We've got it folded here, you can see. So I'm going to stitch from this outer edge here where the raw edges are to the one and a half mark just about here um, and that I, about a quarter inch seam allowance on this one not a half inch it's just really to catch the two layers together so if you wanted to do less than a quarter of an inch that's fine it's not crucial that it has to be for a quarter of an inch um, but you might find that easier um, a little bit later on so we're just coming along the top of the shoulder so like I said, if you see that written in the pattern, you'll think, what is she talking about? But this is the shoulder of the bag that we're stitching now. Nice strong stitch at that one and a half inch mark. Whoops. So we're gonna start at that one and a half inch mark now. 
nice little back stitch so it's strong and then we're just going to stitch across the shoulder again okay so there's the shoulders stitched so from my one and a half inch mark out as you know I just trim my thread so it's nice and neat yep lovely so if we look at the bag in the front now here um, I've stitched along here if I do my finger along there and along there and if you can open that seam up and flatten it out so it's neat and you might like I say you might want to get the iron to that now and just open that seam up and flatten it so if we look on the overhead um, this will open up you don't want to um, stitch it down or anything like that because that's going to show on the front but just finger press it and again here you can just finger press it if you want to okay um, we're going to stitch a tab on there so we will st be stitching that flat anyway but it gives you a good indication of what it looks like so there's our there's our where we started stitching out we're just going to finger press it okay so let's move on so going by the the, the actual pattern itself which is always a good idea um, what we're going to do now is go back to how it was like this so we folded it in half and we've got the flap sitting at the top what we need to do now is find this halfway point between this seam here that we've done and the bottom folded edge so you're finding that halfway point and again you can do let's just move this lining a little bit maybe that's better so you can do a little notch or you can just measure it or you can just fold it in half oh, I'm going to do a little notch so you're folding it the seam that you've just done to the folded edge so I'm just going to make a little notch there we go same on this side so bring those edges together try and get all your fabric sitting nicely it does make a difference as you'll notice in, in just a little while so it's the seam that you've just stitched and the folded bottom edge you're finding the center point between those two there we go so now I've got a notch either side halfway um, along my sides now so what you're going to do where that notch is you're going to stitch about a half an inch probably just less if you can but about a half an inch and you're coming into the bag so let me do one and then show you so just make sure all your layers are sitting nicely on top of each other it's like anything they'll all want to wriggle and do yourself a back stitch and then just come forward about a half an inch you obviously you can measure that if you want to and make it nice and strong so just do a couple of rows of stitching so if we look at it now let's look at it from the overhead there we go so I've just done that half an inch of stitching and you're coming into the bag okay you're not going across you're going into the bag same the other side so just find all your layers get them all lined up get your fabrics all sitting nicely on top of each other nice little back stitch about a half an inch a few little stitches there just to hold all your layers so now we've done that both sides so there's my stitching there okay so the next thing we need to do is to actually um, fold these we'll, we'll do the tabs last as it happens um, but we need to fold these now this is where you might need to pay a little bit of attention <laughs> if you haven't done already so we'll do one side first so if we come for, to the overhead here perhaps we can see a little bit easier so there's my folded edge here there's my folded edge and there's my shoulder and there's my stitching here and the first thing you're going to do is to put your fingers between the layers 
and you're bringing up so where this is folded here give it a little squidge so you've got an idea and that folded edge there comes up to the top and that folded edge where you've just squidged is going to go on the stitching so either side you're going to have a pleat that looks like that okay hopefully you can see that I think the pictures are quite good in the pattern they, they kind of explain so you're folding it like that so I'll show you that again just to make sure so you've got your folded edge here and this is your lining you're going putting your finger between the layers so I've got my right sides there and where this bottom edge is here I'm going to bring up and match it to my stitching here and I'm going to pop a pin in there just to hold that all together for the for the moment we're going to move it in a second but just holds it there while I do the next stage so let's just and try and keep all those layers together they will want to wriggle I mean the, we're lucky that you know we're not putting the wadding right up to the edge if if the wadding was right up to the edge and I did that for a reason um, you'd be fighting with so many layers and so many thicknesses but actually all we're dealing with now is um, just four layers of fabric so hopefully you can see what that looks like okay you're going to do exactly the same with this top part here so pop your fingers in between the the right um, fabric so the right side of the fabric so you're out of fabric there we go so each side I'm holding a piece of lining I'm just going to snip that little piece away there because we can do with that um, looking a little better so let's just snip that away there we go so pop your fingers in between the layers and that shoulder seam you can open up and you can match up to your stitch line so you're bringing that down so while I've got that in my hand I'm going to take hold of my pin and I'm just literally replacing it through all of the layers now okay so you've got exactly what you had before I know this seems complicated but it really isn't it's just thinking about what I'm saying and then I'm bringing these other two pleats out and I'm just going to take my pin out and now I'm going through all my layers and again so um, the idea of keeping the wadding away from the edges now you can understand why that's such a good idea because it reduces all of that bulk and your normal domestic machines will easily go through all of those layers so if I was to hold that like that that's what we're kind of looking at a nice sandwich okay we're going to do the same the other side so let's just trim our thread so there's our bottom edge there we'd like all those layers to sit together so from that bottom edge I'm just putting my hand in there and I'm bringing that up to match where I stitched so this middle of the stitching should go in the or sorry the middle of the fold should go uh, on the stitching line and it should match up beautifully so just pop a few pins in to hold all those layers together make sure your fabric is beautifully smooth and also try and keep those layers sitting on top of each other it's not desperately crucial but it just keeps everything really neat that's it I've got it now so we'll put another pin in there so there's our first bit done okay that's what it should look like so this is your shoulder here so let's just pop our finger in there and you're bringing the shoulder open it up you're bringing that down to your stitch line matching all that up take your pin out and put it through all of the layers to hold that together so you need some nice strong pins because some of this is going through the wadding as well because of the length of the pins so through the layers there 
and pin. Just bring these together and these and pin. And try and get your pleats to match up at the ends. It's not desperately crucial if they don't, but it's nice if you can get those two really nicely sitting on top of each other. So that's what we've got. I've got a kind of like a sausage going on now. So if we were look at it from the front, let's just give it a bit of a, a tug there. That flap could go inside just to get out of the way if you want. But that's the sort of thing we're looking at now. <laughs> so what we're going to do is you're going to stitch right across those ends. Like I say, you should be able to with your regular domestic machine because there's no wadding there. Again, we're doing um, half an inch. I would go just slightly under half an inch. So it means that you're, you're definitely away from all of that wadding. And then because we've pinned, it should be a nice, easy job going across all the layers. Take it easy when you come to that uh, seam on the shoulder there because we've got quite a few layers going on. So if you need to ease your needle across, just be respectful of your machine. Oh, hi there. Thank you for stopping by. I was going to talk to you about the Gold Club, actually, and I'm preparing for our Facebook Live tonight because every week on Facebook in the Gold Sewing Group, we actually do other things like mm, free motion embroidery tonight. So the Gold Online Sewing Group, what is all that about? Well, if you go to my website, lizzycurtis.com, you'll see the sign up tab. Click on that. You get a choice of membership. But what you do get every month is two different super patterns especially for you and, and do you know what when they go in the shop the next month they're 4 99 each so this is an absolute bargain for five pounds about six dollars twenty something like that you're getting those two full patterns with video tutorials as well so why don't you join up today and join the online sewing group which is known as the gold sewing group i'll see you there bye <laughs> all the way across. So we've stitched that together right away across. We do the same the other side. Just be careful of your where your seam is. should be fine but it's just being you know don't be gung-ho about it okay, nice back stitch just to neaten off and these ends we're going to bind them but you could just pinking shear them or you could zigzag them or put them under your overlocker there's no hardware there to get in the way of the overlocker so if you want to do that as a finishing method by all means do that I'm just going to bind them in the last thing so let's turn it through and there's a definite way of folding this so you've got those lovely pleats at the um, sides so let's just push that out and what you need to do you know the piece we just saw that seam we want it to go um, exactly in the middle of the of the sides so you've got a lovely um, fold we'll see we'll get there and then you'll see and you can feel it when it goes in the middle so if I hold that up and you see it kind of makes it a boxy look like that and we've got the flap there so again, just push. You're not push. There's not actual corners, but it's quite obvious that it's the end of the the folded shape, I suppose. And just make sure that that seam that we just stitched is right in the centre. So let's just get that squared up a bit. So there we are. If I show you that end, you can see what it looks like, and that then comes over like that, and that is is practically your bag made. Let's quickly do the, um, let's pop that down there just for a moment. Let's quickly do the tabs. So what we need to do there, these are squares. So opposite 
ends just turn over a quarter of an inch and give that a, a little top stitch so it's nice and neat so just opposite ends so let's do two So um, this, this bag, you could probably, once you've got it all cut out, you could easily make this up in, in an afternoon, or you could take your time on certain aspects of it. There's a lot of potential here for other things, other bits of creativity. So there's our squares done. So we've um, made them nice and neat top and bottom. So now all you're going to do is put your sides to the center and fold again. So each side goes to the center like that and then we're folding again and you're going to do a top stitch there we go so it's all lovely and neat it's just it's a couple of threads there i'm just going to snip away because you know you're going to see them In both sides I'm doing a little tiny back stitch just to finish them off so that's what they look like just keep the threads as neat as you can because you're going to this is something that you will see yourself so don't hurry this bit so again those raw edges to the center and fold again and then you're going to top stitch and you mustn't be worried because there is the pattern to follow as well and you've got all the step-by-step -step instructions in the pattern so you know exactly what you're doing and you've got this video as well so just snip our threads even though I've got a thread cutter you still get little ends okay so there's our little tabs done what we need to do now is put our hardware on just pop it through i'll fold over half an inch and top stitch so let's do that half an inch and then top stitch <laughs> And I go over the stitching I've already done, so it looks fairly neat. But if you want to do a second row of stitching, so it's really um, secure, because I think with this bag, you're going to put a lot of things in it. So again, let's just cut our threads, fold this over. So you're putting the rectangle on. These are called rectangles, a bit of hardware. Putting a rectangle on, folding that over a half an inch, let's measure. And measure the other one as well so it's the same and just follow the stitching that you did on the top stitching on the ends that way it keeps things quite neat nice little back stitch to make it nice and secure there we go. <clears throat> so we've already got our neat ends so there's our I get that the right way around there's our tabs ready to go so on the back what you're going to do is you're going to measure where we started a one and a half um, inches you remember we that's where we started our shoulder so measure down one inch from there open up that shoulder seam and then place your tab on there and place it so the right side of your tab is showing so if I put it on there and pin you'll be able to see what that looks like and you're just going to stitch that on with a, a rectangle box um, half an inch wide um, or you can just do um, two or three rows of stitching um, either side and that will be fine 
So again, open up the other shoulder. And when you're stitching this, you'll be able to um, feel whether you've got that open. If you wanted to put these tabs on before you stitch these sides together, by all means. So each side is now pinned in place. So I'm going to pop it under the machine. Let's take the pin out. <laughs> Make sure your seam is open. Like I say, if you've pressed it, then it should be fine. Pretty sure that's okay. Nice back stitch to start. So you're going really, you know, where you stitch the top stitching, where you you stitch the uh, the first little bit you did. Try and follow all of those seams because then it kind of disguises the fact that you stitched this on. Just make sure your shoulder seam is open. <coughs> Excuse me. So you're stitching a rectangle. All the way around. You probably will find that easier to do that before you stitch the sides. So there's one, can you see? I mean, I'm using cream thread, um, but you perhaps want to use matching thread so you don't see the, the stitching so much. I've got a few little loose threads that need my attention. So let's give those a little snip. Okay, now we'll do the other side. So let's take the pin out. Make sure that seam is open, which it is. Okay. So, so the box that I'm creating is about a half an inch but I'm following my stitching. I'm not making secondary lines. It would make it a little bit ugly. So I'm just going all the way round. Back stitch so it's nice and strong. There we go. Trim off our threads. So you might have to trim some threads inside the bag as well. So there is the, the other one attached, you can see. I, I quite like the white stitching, to be honest, but you, you may not. You may want to use uh, a more of a denim coloured thread. And obviously our magnetic closures can, can be put together. And that's our main body of the bag done. So let's pop that there. So now we've got the strap. Now you may have to make the strap in two parts because it is quite long. It's about 40 inches long and we need some ribbon. So bear with. So my piece of ribbon is just over the 40 inches long. And this is how we're going to turn the, the handle through. So you're going to stitch the end of your ribbon and it's got to be a strong ribbon, really strong. And you're going to stitch it to the right side of your fabric. So if I if I do it and then show it to you and you're really going to stitch it well, I'm serious. So one, two, three, four, five, five rows of stitching. OK. So let's just trim that because that's a little bit of interfacing showing. So my ribbon is actually a tape more than it is a ribbon. It's very strong. So you need something really strong. So you're really going to be pulling on this shortly. I've stitched it to the right side of my fabric. So it's going to lie inside the tube. OK, it's going to be inside the tube. 
and when I come to the end of my tube my ribbon as you can see is longer than my tube so you need it uh, I'd say 44 inches long if your strap is 40 let's say 44 inches long you need to be able to get hold of the end of it so a little short piece is going to be no good to you at all so again we're going to do right sides together and it is a half inch seam allowance just make sure you don't stitch your tape because it's going to be inside so keep moving it to the center So I can just push the tape right into the crease and while I remember I'm going to put my iron on because I need to iron this seam open so it lays flat. Like I say it's quite a, <laughs> it's pushing my bag out of the way. It's quite a, a long handle, so you may want to adjust this for yourself, or you might want to put an adjustable strap on it. I like to think I give you the pattern and then you make it yours. So coming right down to the bottom now. Just make sure you don't catch that tape. Okay, so we've gone all the way along and our tape is caught inside. Now before we turn it through, to give this a bit of a fighting chance, um, we're going to just bring my ironing mat up. We're going to open that seam up. Now, it, it's not necessarily going to stay open when you're turning it through, but by the end of it, because you've told it that's how it wants to be, it will stay like that. It will eventually fall um, into that sort of position, if you like. So we're just going to go along the entire piece. Don't worry about putting the fact you're putting um, creases on the edges I'm, I'm not bothered about that it's the fact that i want this seam to lay flat once it's inside the tube it kind of gives it a little bit more rigidity um, it's already got a medium weight iron on stabilizer on so it's already nice and strong but this seam will give it a little bit more strength which is great all right like I say, don't worry about giving those um, edges um, a, a, a crease. Don't worry about that. Okay, so this might take a minute to to fold to pull through, but let me just show you how to start it. So I've got my ribbon here, and what we want to do is just to take the end where the ribbon is stitched. We want to get that inside the tube. So give it a pull, and it's one of those things where you might have to tell it. So you're, I'm pushing the raw edges of the top of the tube inside. And this is why you need this ribbon and the stitching that you did to be super strong. And it, it just takes a minute or two just to get that first couple of inches going. And once you've done that, it's relatively easy to pull through. But there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of fabric. You've got the stabilizer and you've got the top of that ribbon all wanting to go through at the same time. So it's just getting that first bit going. So I'm just going to use my scissors and poke that in. Okay. And like I say, it does take a minute to pull it through. But once you've got it started, <laughs> it's fine. There we go, I've got it now. <laughs> so just ease it. It's a bit like a sausage. <laughs> Trying to turn a sausage inside out. And every now and again, you just need to give it a little help. Like I say, there's a lot of fabric to turn in on itself with that stabiliser and that, and that big seam. But it's coming. Mm. 
and you'll get to a point where the end comes out and you think because this is the dangerous bit when you're pulling on this and uh, you haven't got the end out yet but just keep going every now and again you might have to give it a little bit of help or remind it where it's what it's supposed to be doing <laughs> So you don't know this, but I can feel all this coming through. And any minute now, that's going to pop out the end. If we're in, can you imagine how long was it when we started? And now it's this big. <laughs> so all of that is inside the tube. So like I said, just keep going. If it gets bunged up at the top here, if it, if it gets a little bit too congested, then give it a little help. Um, I'm not saying it's easy. There we are, look, that's come out now. <laughs> I wanted you to see see this. Oh, there, done. You might want to give this an iron now. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to. So where you had your ribbon, and it, mine is still really strong, I'm just going to snip that away, the whole piece, the whole end. So there's a little bit of uh, denim. Let's put that there. So let's get the iron on this again. Uh, I'll get my little mat this time. So because we ironed that prior to pulling through, that seam should actually now, it should be lying flat, which it is. Don't forget, you can top stitch this. So the same with your tab. If you want to top stitch either side, then please do that. It really makes it smart. But for the moment, I'll just keep it as it is. I can always do the top stitching at a later date. But just to get this demonstration done. There we go. Right, let's turn my iron off. Just trim the end so it's nice and straight. Okay. So now I've got my lovely strap, but I've got two raw ends. Um, let me just trim that up a little bit more. Okay. So what you can do now is to turn those ends in. I didn't turn those ends in before because I had the ribbon and I knew I was going to trim it away. Now it shouldn't be too difficult to put this, take this under a quarter of an inch or so. So just spend a moment and tuck those ends in. I mean, this strap should now be an inch wide. Okay, the hardware is an inch. Your strap should be an inch. Your tab is an inch. So just spend a moment, just tucking in about a half an inch on the end there. <clears throat> so it's lovely and neat. That's lovely. So just make a spend a couple of minutes on this to, to get it nice and neat. Get both sides looking the same. Mine aren't at the moment. So just keep pushing that. That's lovely. It's lovely now. That'll do super. I feel like I'm at the dentist, <laughs> pushing some filling into your teeth. Oh, whatever did I think about that for? So um, just keep that as it is. It's not quite equal. I'm going to fiddle with that a bit more. There we go. That's better. I'm aiming for, for, for perfection. And of course, you know that that'll never happen. So again, the other end. Just fold that in. I mean, you've got a lot of fabric going on here. You've got that seam. You've got all the um, seam allowance all there. You've got all this, the um, stabiliser, the layers of denim. So you've got a lot going on. Just spend a moment, though. I mean, on this end that we turned through, you might have wanted to press that. That, that would have helped. But we'll just do it with our fingers here. There we go. I won't spend too much time on this now. She says, 
still sp still spending time on it okay so that's okay I'm leaving it <laughs> so with our bag we're now going to put our strap into our rectangles so you're coming in from the top so the wrong side is is here so it's over the top and it's going to be wrong sides together when I pull it through and I would pull it through inch inch and a half make a nice decent sort of uh, fold back on itself um, you might want to get to this stage pin it and see how it sits on you see if it's too long or too short but that's what it looks like so pop it under the machine um, I'm going to stitch this from the back so I can I know I'm going to catch my my the ends and I'm still going to push this under if you've got a stiletto please use it now you don't need to do a rectangle <clears throat> just go straight across do a double row so it's nice and strong if you want to do a rectangle do one but I don't think it's necessary so there is I've we've got a couple of little threads there let me just snip those away so there is the end done so just make sure we track back make sure it's straight over the top of your other rectangle come back on itself so the raw the wrong sides the sides with the seam in the middle are sitting on top of each other just make sure that it's the same the other side which it is and then stitch across nice little back stitch to hold and go back on yourself reverse all the way across it saves you turning your work as long as you're confident we're going backwards so there we are so there is the the second strap in place going all the way across so that is now complete so of course with Norma you can do lots of different things you can personalize it you can make it from cotton canvas you could make it from faux leather um, you can make it as a beach bag or a picnic bag or a swimming bag or once again it could be a fantastic shopping bag for you with that fabulous folded effect on each end like that and also it's nice and soft because we've used the H640 you may want to use something a little stiffer but be aware of those side seams okay because you're going through lots and lots of different layers so with those side seams don't forget I'm going to bind mine with some spotty fabric to match my lining and the instructions are in the pattern or you could zigzag or you could use your pinking shears and just leave it at that if it's for a gift you probably want to bind but be aware as long as your machine can go through all of those layers then you'll be fine so there we are and of course we've got this gorgeous spotty lining inside and we've got lots of room for all your goodies and I think if you're going uh, shopping for bits and bobs I think lots of things will go in there no problem at all it's a good size bag I absolutely love it I'm not going to stand up and uh, and demonstrate it but you can see what it looks like so where's the other one gone we got it handy oh yeah here my shibori one <gasps> which one do I use because I always use one for at least a couple of months so if anybody's got any queries I, I kind of road tested it so I know how it, how it feels so there we are so that's the isn't that glorious that fabric isn't it amazing and it is true shibori fabric <gasps> and, and actually all the dye was coming off on my hands when I was when I was working with it which I thought was hilarious so two different looks really but they, it is a very much a boho bag that's what I wanted it to be very slouchy very soft very cuddly with lots of room and lots of potential so this is Norma and I hope you made loads.